Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the church on this beautiful Sunday morning. Um, it's a joy to be in the house of the Lord. We've come to worship Him. We've come to be together, fellowship and community. Um, I invite you all to stand with me. We're going to get into worship. Our very own Pastor Adam is back on the sound booth today. So if we sound bad, it's not my fault. That was all. All right, I'm going to pray. Dear Jesus, I thank you so much for this day. Father, I thank you for um, just everything you've done for us. God, we just praise you. We give you honor and glory and power. And um, in Jesus' name I pray.
throughout the watershed of the Miss Kingdom. Let there be a mighty deluge of your spirit, a rain, a mighty outpouring of your spirit this day that starts something afresh and anew in the spirit realm and brings revival and refreshing and renewing to this land. We thank you, Father. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. And everybody said... Amen and amen. God bless you. You can be seated this morning. Well, it's good to be in the house of the Lord with God's people, isn't it? 
We are family. Say that with me. We are family. Sounds like the Pittsburgh Pirates back in 1970 when they won the championship. We are family. <laughs> Amen. We are family. God bless you. Is there anybody here for your first time at Cornerstone? If you'd raise your hand real high. If you'd raise your hand, we want to honor you and recognize you and give you a first-time guest card and a nice gift. Anybody for your first time? Okay, the ushers are coming, going to receive the morning tithes and offerings. Now I can see who's here. We turn the lights on. We've been conserving energy is what it is. Okay? God bless you. <laughs> Continue to pray for Pastor Jamie, believing he's been down since Friday on his back, believing for healing. How many believe God heals? Amen. He does, doesn't he? He is our healer. He declared, I am the Lord that healeth thee. So we claim healing for Pastor Jamie, for others that need a touch in their body today. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to give to your kingdom. We are cheerful givers, hilariously happy givers. Thank you, Father. Thank you for blessing us so we can bless your kingdom and expand the kingdom of God throughout this region and throughout this world. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. Okay, turn your attention to the screens now for our video announcements. Hi, I'm Pastor Eric Waldemeyer. I'm the Connect Pastor here at Cornerstone. Welcome to Coach Fitness. So, Coach Fitness was a, was a vision of mine to help people here in the church that give them an avenue if they've never tried fitness or if they want an additional uh, different type of workout. Coach in the Hebrew, K-O-A-C-H, stands for uh, Strength, Might, and Courage. And so my vision for this was to come in and give folks an avenue to, to get healthy, get fit. Uh, we use resistance bands. It's a full body workout. We do it, work everything from the core to um, our, you know, our biceps, our triceps, our shoulders, our legs. We do a full body cool down afterwards. And it, whether you're a beginner or you've been doing fitness for a while, this is a, a C12 for you if you're just looking to get an additional workout or try a different kind of workout from what uh, you get at a typical gym. We bring the resistance bands to you and just come in, have fun, the fellowship is great. We listen to music while we're working out and we even get a little Bible study in the beginning. So our Bible study, we focus on uh, things in the Bible that are centered around fitness. And so each week, we have a passage out of the Bible that will focus either on nutrition, fitness, or just uh, some aspect of our relationship with God. Uh, it all intertwines in, in our you know, fitness journey here. So as we, as we come in each week, we will have that Bible study starting off. We offer prayer if you, if you need prayer for anything. And uh, just jump in and we, we get to work. You're welcome to bring your own mat so we, and when we're stretching, you can, don't have to lay down on the floor. And you're, all you need to do is bring your fitness clothes and yourself. The equipment is provided. We meet on Monday evenings at 5.30 and it's in the barracks here at the church. Hope to see you here. Good morning and welcome to church. My name is Abigail, and we're so glad you're joining us this Sunday. C12 groups are Bible studies and get-togethers offered all throughout the week for you to get connected with others and build your faith. Find a list of current C12 groups on our app or website. Today we're saying congratulations to our current FFL graduates. To sign up for the next Foundations for Life, fill out the card in the pew in front of you and drop it off at the Connect Desk. Another option to register is by visiting upcoming events on our app or website. Sunday, July 9th at 9 a.m. will be when the next FFL starts. This is for you if you're new to the church, want to get connected, and grow in your giftings. 
The Splash Dash 5K is on Saturday. You don't want to miss this opportunity to get some exercise in the great outdoors. But also, this opportunity is to support our youth at Cornerstone and their upcoming summer events. Registration starts at 10 a.m. at the barracks. The cost is $20 and the first 100 participants will receive a t-shirt. Hope to see you then. Invite your family to join us next week as we will be honoring all high school and college graduates. We're proud of how far you've come and for what's next in your life. Now here's a word from our pastor. Don't you love the video announcements? What a nice feature and, and helps the pastoral staff out and it keeps us from getting long-winded. <laughs> Not that we would ever do anything like that, but uh, some of them, Pastor Jamie does. No, I wouldn't. Pick on him while he's homesick this morning. That is not nice at all, is it? How many had a good week this week? Amen. Every week is good, isn't it? Uh, we're enjoying this beautiful weather. It's exactly what we prayed for. We prayed for warm weather, and we prayed for the rain to stop, and it stopped. Okay. And uh, somebody needs to start praying that it starts back up a little bit, okay? God is faithful. Though. He causes the rain to fall upon the just and upon the unjust. Turn with me in your Bibles to John chapter 14. John chapter 14. I love this passage of Scripture. Of course, if you're a Bible student, if you love the Word of God, you love every bit, every passage of the Word. Some of it in the Old Testament is a little bit struck a little bit harder to get into when it comes to Leviticus. Um, there's a lot of nuggets, though, even in Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Um, you'll pick and glean a lot of things out that really benefit you. <clears throat> John 14, verse 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, If any man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode or our home with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my saying, and the word which, you, which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither be afraid. To chapter 16, verse 7 only. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him. Notice he says, I will send him unto you. Father, thank you for your holy word. Thank you for the revelation of truth. Holy Spirit, speak to us today divine truth. We look to you and we thank you for opening our eyes taking the cover off and unveiling truth to us today, truth of who you are. Thank you for your precious anointing that destroys every yoke. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. And everybody said, amen. You can be seated this morning. Well, you can feel free to say an amen once in a while, oh me, or ouch, fits sometimes too, or preach it, brother. Those are like saying sick him to a bulldog, okay? And uh, sometimes in the early service, I know it's early and it's, a, I don't, there's something about the atmosphere of the early service. I love it. It's more quiet, more reserved, um, more reverent. It seems like the second service, we get a little bit more rowdy and cheer a little bit more, but that every service is very unique and we want it to be designed by the Holy Spirit. This morning's message is on another comforter. Jesus said it's expedient or it's necessary for you 
that I go away, that I go back to be with the Father, because if I go not away, the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, will not come unto you. Now, the word Comforter means one who strengthens, one who is called alongside to strengthen. So Jesus said, I go so I can send you another Comforter. It was only possible for Jesus in his earthly body, when he was Emmanuel, God with us, incarnate with us, it was only possible for Jesus, Jesus to be at one place at one time. Okay? But when he sends the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit can be all places at all times. The difference in the Christian life and the difference in church, gathering together the body of Christ, all the difference in the world is wrapped up in what we believe about the Holy Spirit and how we allow him to take full preeminence and control. If he is an it or a thing or a vapor or a mist in your mind, that's what he's going to be in your presence. But if you acknowledge who he is, there's something about a first-time guest. When you invite a first-time guest someplace, you acknowledge them, don't you? God is not, the Holy Spirit is not our guest. This is his house. This is his place. And when we acknowledge him and we give him full preeminence and we say, Holy Spirit, you are welcome to move any way that you choose, any way that you want to speak to us, any way that there's times where we'll have an altar call in the middle of the service. It's, it's, not, it's not pre-planned. It's not on a program someplace. Okay, we're going to have an altar service here. The Holy Spirit's going to move here. No, we just stay open to and listen to the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit can work in a program. The, the, the songs that were sung this morning, they were practiced, they were rehearsed ahead of time, but there was much prayer went into them asking the Holy Spirit, what do you want? What songs do you want sung? How do you want to move? How many love that song when you walk into this room? I, I love that. When the Holy Spirit comes in, I can sense I, I know the Holy Spirit's with me always, but I can sense when he comes in a spatial way. There's just an awareness. It's like your head spins around on your shoulders. They, I think God just walked into the house today. The Holy Ghost just moved in the house. Now, there's something that the Holy Ghost will not share with, and that is pride. Pride and the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, will not connect they will, they're like oil and water. They will not mix. Where there's pride and there's arrogance, the Holy Spirit will not move. In fact, sometimes he will actually leave. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, Paul talks about the Holy Ghost. He says, grieve not the Holy Ghost. That word grieve means to vex or to sadden or to quench. Do not quench the Holy Spirit. Pride and arrogance will quench the Holy Spirit. A wrong motive will cause God to back off and say, if that's what you want, you have it. It's your church, it's not mine. But when we allow Jesus to build his church, he sends the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit begins to work in every heart and every life supernaturally. He moves in our lives. It's a beautiful thing, this operation, this moving of the Holy Spirit. I have been in churches. I was saved in a church in Chester Hill in which the Holy Spirit was quenched. I had no idea what that meant back then. I just knew what I felt in my spirit when the pastor would say things, when he would say like, this is the best church in all the world, filled with pride. When he would say, the church is down the street, and he would call them by name and, and lambaste them and slam the other churches in the community. Friend, that's other churches. Are, are, that's our brothers and sisters. Amen. That's God's church. That's the church that Jesus died for. Yes. Who are we to slam or to put down? We might have little differences in doctrine, but if our, 
If our doctrine concerning who Jesus Christ is, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are the same, that's my brother and sister. I can care less what they believe about eschatology. I don't even want to know. It doesn't concern me at all. What concerns me is that we are family and we are one and the Holy Spirit has united us together as one. He's trying to. But where there's pride and arrogance, where people have a higher opinion of themselves. The Bible talks about be not high-minded. Don't think more highly of yourself than you ought to think. I realize who I am, whose I am, and I know, I know where I came from, but I stand in Christ today. I stand complete in Christ, washed by his precious blood, empowered by his Holy Spirit. I am not the same man I used to be. I'm not the same man I was a year ago, five years ago, let alone 48 years ago almost. The Holy Ghost is constantly transforming us and working Christ in us and the image of Christ in us. We are learning to be led by the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 8 talks about being led by the Holy Spirit. They that are led by the Holy Spirit, they are the children of God. God wants to lead us and direct us. If you're making decisions based upon your intellect or what you want, your carnal desires want, you are bucking against the Holy Spirit. Yield to the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, what do you want? Show me. You show me, and I will walk that out. Had the privilege of sitting under Pastor Arnold for 10 years, my pastor, almost 11 years actually. My, my wife and I and children, we basically cut our teeth there, our baby teeth as newborn babes in Christ there. And Pastor Arnold was very sensitive toward the moving of the Holy Spirit. I can still see him flowing and, and singing songs and worshiping the Lord and waiting upon the Lord and praying and listening to what God was saying. He was so sensitive to the Holy Spirit. I had my first encounter with the Holy Spirit at a revival at Trinity Full Gospel Church in 1976. I'd been saved about six or seven months and I, I had never sensed the Holy Spirit's presence. I'd been born again, but when I walked in there for a revival service by invitation of a friend and didn't know uh, hardly anybody there, just my friend and a couple other people, but God, the Holy Ghost, came into that service that very first night we were there. And I literally felt like heaven had moved from the heavens right down into that pew where I was sitting. How many has ever felt like that before? The presence of God. I felt the presence of God for the first time go through me from head to toe and just like electrical charges. That was my first encounter with the Holy Spirit. Now listen, if you could bottle that and sell that, you would put every drug company out of business, every alcoholic company out of business because there's nothing can match the, the, the presence, the divine presence of God when he manifests himself physically to you. It's one thing that when he manifests himself spiritually because he changes our heart, puts a new heart, a new spirit within us, and we're not, we know that we're changed from the inside out. But there's not a feeling there. It's just a heart change and transformation. But when he comes upon your physical body, the supernatural touching the, the physical body, there, it's just like electrical charges going through your, your body and endorphins and all of that stuff going through your body like, like nothing. You can't describe it. A friend of mine, I had that encounter in the middle of the night and he cried out to Jesus for the first time and he said, he said Steve, I have never felt anything like I felt when I called upon the name of Jesus and, and asked for the blood of Jesus to be applied. It's supernatural. Holy Spirit 
is supernatural. Don't try to reason him out. Don't try to put him on a shelf someplace or in the back room someplace. Don't be ashamed of him. Acknowledge him. Amen. Holy Spirit is here. Now, I, I love this scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. Paul concludes this chapter with honoring the Father, honoring the Son, Jesus Christ, and then he honors, he says, the communion of the Holy Ghost. The communion, that communion means the sharing together, the fellowship and the friendship. Develop a friendship with the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we're praying, we say, oh God, my, and you feel like you need to scream a little louder because you feel like God is so far up there. He is, he's in heaven. But you know what? He hears everything. He hears the little faintest cry. But you don't have to raise your voice because Holy Spirit's right here. The Father's seated on the throne. Jesus is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. But he said, I'm going to send you another comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. And he is our friend. He, we can share together with him. We can talk with him. It's okay to say, Holy Spirit, show me this or reveal something to me. How many has ever lost something and, and it's around the house and you misplaced it and, and you think, or maybe you lost a ring in the grass or something and you started praying and then and you said, Holy Spirit, show me where that's at. You know where that's at. Show me where that's at. How many has ever done that before? Hey, you know what? Try it because he listens, okay? It doesn't work. He works, okay? If you just, just ask him and to show you. I've done that before and not found it that day and, and the next day find it and say, thank you, Holy Spirit. I needed it today. I didn't need it yesterday. So he's always right on time. He knows he's our best friend. He's our counselor. You can ask him for advice. You can ask him to lead you, to direct you. I'm getting ahead of myself because we're going to, point number three is, is what does the Holy Spirit do? The things, the activities, the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. But first of all, point number one is who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is God. How do you know he's God? The Bible says so, okay? He is called Holy Spirit. Holy um, describes his character, his nature, his attributes, his personality. In Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God hovered. He moved, the Bible says. That word move means hovered. The Spirit of God hovered over. The first place we see the Holy Spirit mentioned. You say, oh, I thought that was God. He is God. Okay. But he's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, God. Three manifest in one. Three in one, God. And in verse 26, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, God says, and let us make man after our image and after our likeness. We're not made after the image of angels. We're made after the image and the likeness of God. And he said, let us make us an image, a man, an image of ourselves. That word God and God said is Elohim in the Hebrew it simply means it is a plural pronoun. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are mentioned in here, are revealed here. Now, the Son isn't mentioned. He's alluded to, and later on you see him very clear. So, the Spirit of God hovered, and he created the heavens and the earth. The Holy Spirit created the heavens and the earth. The Bible also says that the Father was involved in creation. It says in, in Colossians chapter 1, I think it's verse 17, that Jesus Christ created all things for his glory and for himself. So Christ cre created everything, Colossians 1, 16, excuse me. So Christ was involved in creation. The Holy Spirit was involved in creation. And you trace, you can go all through the Old Testament and New Testament books. And I think just about every book you're going to find the Holy Spirit mentioned. 
In the Old Testament, he's referred to the Spirit of God, the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Has many names describing his character and attributes. But I, I love the one where he is, he comes in the form of a glory cloud. It's called the Shekinah glory cloud. It was the presence of God is what it was. God, God took form of a cloud and that cloud would settle over the children of Israel. When the cloud moved, Israel would follow the, the cloud. That's, that's the Holy Spirit moving. When the Holy Spirit would stop, they would stop and they would set up camp. When the enemy tried to attack them, God would just set down his cloud right between the enemy and his children and protect them. That's what the Holy Spirit does. So who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is God. All through Scripture, Gideon and, and uh, Samson, it talks about the Holy Spirit moved them and Holy Spirit came upon them, put Gideon on like a glove. How many has ever sensed, like, sensed that God just, God just took you like a glove? You had nothing to do with it. You was just an old glove laying there until God picked you up and put you on and began to move that glove. How many has ever felt that way before? I, I have sensed that. I have actually seen myself years ago as a young believer teaching the Word of God and things coming out of my mouth I hadn't studied and hadn't prepared, just flowing out of me. And, and all at once, God took me out of my body and I'm standing over at the side room and I'm watching my body and listening to my voice. I say, you say really, that really happened? Was you hallucinating? No. I was in the spirit, okay? The Holy Spirit was speaking through me. Not, for about 20 minutes, this went, no, I was just over there for a few seconds. But, but about 20 minutes, it just came out of me. Truth flowed out of me. The Holy Spirit, God wants to take you. you. You put so much limitation on yourself, and you rightfully should. I can't, but he can. So if you say, Lord, I just yield myself unto you a vessel of righteousness fit for the master's use. He will fill you with his glory, with his presence and his power and the Holy Spirit. Jesus will live his life through you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Would somebody shout amen this morning? Church, when we try to do it in the energy of the flesh, we fail. We, we get frustrated, we fall short, we slip back into old habits and old mindsets. But when we constantly come to him and rely upon him, total dependence upon the Holy Spirit. I saw that before I was able to walk. I saw it in others. I saw others walking by the power of the Holy Spirit. And as a baby Christian, I longed for that. I said, God, I want, I want to walk in the Spirit like that person walks in the Spirit. They model. I could, I could see the Holy Spirit working through them. It was supernatural. It was not a natural thing. You can, you can operate in the supernatural. You can allow the Holy Spirit to take your vessel and live his life through you. And that's where it's joy unspeakable and full of glory. That's where it seems like it's always a downhill ride instead of an uphill struggle when the Holy Ghost is doing the job. He doesn't want us to sweat. He doesn't want us to fret. He just wants us to yield to him and allow him and his glory, the glory of God, the Spirit of God to flow in us and through us. Point number two is, where is the Holy Ghost? Wherever you are, he is, okay? Where is the Holy Ghost? He's with you. He's with every believer. In fact, in Acts chapter 2, verse 17, he said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men are going to dream dreams. Your young men are going to see visions. So he said, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Every human being, he's going to. So where is the Holy Spirit? 
Friday night, I, I lay down in, in the bed and, and meditating, reading some scripture. And this thought began to come to me, where is the Holy Spirit? And I took my phone and in the notes part, I, I began to type in, where is the, just coming, just about eight or 10 things, where is the Holy Spirit? I began to type that in. Where's the, what's the Bible say about where the Holy Spirit is? You know what he says? He says that every believer is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So where is the Holy Spirit? He's living inside of us. These bodies, these, this is his house. Turn with me in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I want to show that to you real quick. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own? He says your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, the house of God. For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which is God's. Now, and if you go back to verse 15, he says, Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I take the members of Christ and, and, and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye not that he which is enjoined into a harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. But he that is joined into the Lord is one spirit. He says, flee fornication, which is any type of sexual perversion. Okay, um, every sin that a man doth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sin against, sins against his own body. Our body is the Lord's. It, we do not use it for fornication. Any sexual relationship outside of marriage with the eye or the physical body is fornication. Any sexual perversion, pornography, all of that crap. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 16, 3, verse 16. Know ye not that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God defile, for the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Let no man deceive himself. Now, a lot of people take these two verses and say, see, you shouldn't smoke. That's the, only, that's the only interpretation they get out of these. You're defiling the temple of God. Well, you defile the temple of God by gossip. Okay? There's a lot of things. Let the Holy Ghost speak to you about what's defiling the temple of God. What is not, if this is God's temple, God's house, God says, don't put stuff in there that you don't think God would want in there. If you, think, if you think it would go into heaven when you go to heaven, put it in here. If it won't, don't put it in here because this is God's house. Now, I'm meddling a little bit, but, but I, I know a lot of people, they want the spirit, but they want the world at the same time. You can't have the world and the spirit of God at the same time. You've got, Paul says, come out from among the world. Be separate, saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing, and then he says, I will receive you. So, and then he says, I will walk up and down in you. God says, I will walk inside of you. My presence, my spirit will move inside of you. Psalm 139, verses 1 through 10. Uh, David had an understanding of where the Holy Spirit was. He's before me, behind me, above me. I'm in his hand. He's my right hand. He's my left hand. Holy Spirit's every place. It might be darkness. Nobody else is around, but I guarantee you, God sees you. He knows you. He's with you, and you're never alone. He's your comforter. I love that word, comforter. We used to sing a song years ago. He's my comfort when I'm weary. He's my shelter. Remember it, Donnie? From the storm. He's my comfort. The Holy Spirit is my comforter. People say, I'm just so lonely. Talk to the Holy Spirit. Develop a relationship with him. He wants to be your best friend. He's with you. Talk to him. Don't ignore him. Number three is what does the Holy Spirit do? Now, I've only got 16 
manifestations of the Holy Spirit. So in order to cover them, it's 10 o'clock right now, I'm just going to read them to you. I'll elaborate on all 16 of these in the late service. What does the Holy Spirit do? He gives joy, joy unspeakable and full of glory. He reveals truth, the Bible says. He will guide you into all truth, Jesus said. He lifts up Jesus. The Holy Spirit lifts up and magnifies Jesus. Wherever Jesus is lifted up, know the Holy Spirit is there at work. He fills, the Holy Spirit fills us to fill as to control us and to move in us and through us. He convicts us. Number six is he emboldens us. He gives us boldness. Number seven, he gives us the gift of tongues. Numerous scripture for that. Number eight, he gives comfort. Number nine, he gives salvation. The Holy Spirit is the one that works regeneration, the born again spirit. Number 10 is deliverance. He delivers us. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. We have been translated into the kingdom from one kingdom of darkness to the light. He has delivered us. Praise God. Number 11, he sanctifies us, sets us apart for himself. Number 12 is he gives us peace. He is our peace speaker. He give, number 13, he's healer. He gives us healing, the Holy Spirit. Number 14, he prepares the way. He goes before us. Number 15, he is the one that places supernatural God's love within us. Number 16 is he empowers us. He empowers us and hath anointed us. He that hath anointed us is God. The anointing is the power of the Holy Spirit. He has filled his people and you can be filled and refilled and double filled. Elisha said to Elisha, give me a double portion of what you have. What did he have? The anointing of the Holy Spirit on him. And God gave him the desire of his heart, a double portion. When you say, God, give me a double portion of your spirit, he's going to say, okay, obey me. Learn to walk with me. Allow me to call the shots and lead the way. The Holy Spirit is supernatural. How many appreciate another comforter? How many appreciate another comforter? <laughs> Amen. Let's bow our heads for closing prayer. Father, thank you for the comfort that we receive in knowing Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge you and we reverence you. And we ask you right now, to fill us. You commanded us in your word, be ye filled with the Spirit. So right now, we open up and say, fill me. Just whisper that prayer, fill me, Holy Spirit. Fill me, take full control of my life, Holy Spirit, till Jesus be seen and formed in me till Christ be formed in me. Holy Spirit, fill me to overflowing with your precious anointing. Jesus, you breathed on your disciples and said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Right now, I sense you breathing on this house and saying receive ye the Holy Ghost give every hungry heart an encounter with Holy Spirit power it's my prayer father for this body that we would learn to walk in the spirit and no longer in the flesh. Thank you, Jesus. Receive you, the Holy Spirit.
while believers are praying. Or you here this morning and you've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you haven't, if you'll raise that hand, I'll be glad to pray with you. Pray a prayer where you can know that God comes into your life and Jesus forgives you of every sin and you are born again. You're changed from the inside out. If you're here, just raise that hand real high. Anybody? Okay, I trust that everybody's already walking with Jesus, knowing who he is. Friend, if you've slipped, if you've fallen short, here's the simple truth. Just repent. The Bible says if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So just ask him, God, forgive me. You see, you see my blunder last week. I ask you to forgive me. Holy Spirit, empower me where I can learn from that and I don't go that route again. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. And everybody said, amen. God bless you. How many sense the awareness of the Holy Spirit? When you walk out of here today, you sit down in that car, Holy Spirit's right in that car with you. He never leaves you. He's there. Ask him, talk to him, lean upon him. I've got to shut this microphone off so I'll quit talking, preaching. God bless you.